In this video, we're gonna be installing wireless Android Auto in an F57 Mini Cooper convertible. Let's go. What's up everyone, I'm Steve and you're watching F33. Now if you like this video, give a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss when a new video drops. Now I recently acquired a Mini Cooper convertible and the first thing that I noticed was that it only came with Apple CarPlay. Android Auto doesn't seem to be included on any of the Minis yet, which is a real bummer because I like my Android phone. Now, I've really enjoyed using the MMI Prime from Bimmer Tech in the F33, so I headed over to their website to see what they had for the Mini. Now, when I went to their website, I saw that they just released the MMI Pro version. Now, this new MMI Pro has all the same features as the Prime, except that it has an updated interface and it's got an HDMI port on it. Now, what this means is that I can hook up something like a Roku in the glove box and have it connected to the screen in the Mini. And that is pretty cool. Now, just like the MMI Prime, the Pro supports both wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. And since this is wireless, I should just be able to keep my phone in my pocket and have it auto connect, which is exactly how technology should be. Simple and seamless. Now the Keys Auto Show is coming up, so I've really got to get this installed so that I don't get lost on the way to the show. Now I'm going to be bringing both the F33 and the F57 this year to the show, and I really look forward to this event every year. And this year it's being held at the Atco Dragway on July 9th. Now tickets are already on sale, so make sure you sign up, and I really hope to see you there. I attended this show the past like two or three years, and it is always insane how many amazing cars are there. All right, so we have a lot to do, so why don't we head out to the car and get the MMI Pro installed. All right, so I wanted to do a quick unboxing before we went ahead and got this installed. So the first thing when you open up the box is you are presented with uh, instructions, and then they send you a cool sticker always love stickers. And then here is the MMI Pro. So when you take the MMI Pro out, you've got your dip switches up top, and this is for different size screens. You've got your HDMI input. And then on the other side, you've got power. So this is kind of like the, the main harness there, uh, antenna, USB and AV, and you have your LCD in and out. Now underneath that, this is where all your cables are at. So we'll just remove the foam here. And then this stand. All right, so in here we've got a couple of cables. This is uh, an additional LCD cable because you're gonna be plugging the one that comes from your head unit into the MMI Pro. And then this one's gonna go out to your actual screen. You've got your wireless antenna. So this is what's going to enable you to get wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This is your um, USB and AV cable. So we're gonna use the USB, um, but if you don't have a front or rear camera, Bimmertech uh, supplies those, or, or I should say sells those, and you can connect those in here and that way all of that will be integrated into the screen. We're not gonna worry about that in this video, we're just gonna use the USB. Um, and the USB is used for updates as well as if you don't wanna use it wirelessly for whatever, whatever reason, you can just plug directly in there. And then lastly, we, are, uh, we have our main harness. So this is going to sit in between the BMW harness, which is gonna plug into one side, and then this is gonna plug into the head unit. Um, and then this is your main you know, power and wiring that's gonna plug into the, to the MMI. So this is what um, you know, feeds all the information uh, into the MMI. The tools needed for this install are an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, T20, a pick tool, 
a trim tool kit, and some zip ties. The difficulty for this install is easy. All right, so before we start working on the interior, we need to disconnect the negative battery. This is kind of a pain in the butt to uh, get to. I don't know why they made this so difficult, but you have a quarter turn for these three T30s. You have three eight millimeters to remove, and then you also have two T10s, uh, sorry, 10 millimeters that you need to remove in order to kind of get this all out. Basically, this is connected to this by a couple 10 millimeters, and if you don't remove that, the whole thing won't come apart. So first things first, uh, take your weather stripping and just pull it aside. Then you can take and remove the eight millimeters. All right, so next thing is you have these uh, 10 millimeters here. So we'll just take and swap over to that. All right, and this is what they look like. All right. And then we'll take our T30 and it's just a quarter turn up at the top. There. All right, and how this is hooked on is over in the corner, over there, you've got a tab that's plugged in. Um, and then over here, you have another tab. Uh, it's kind of an open tab that goes around the screw and that's why you need to re uh, remove that. Um, so we'll just take this top piece and pull that off. Here's that tab that I was talking about that's over on the other side. And then we can take this battery cover and remove this. And now, now we have the battery. So uh, go ahead and take your 10 millimeter. We're just gonna remove the uh, negative battery connection. Make sure you don't touch that positive with your tool. That would end up being a bad day. And then what I like to do is I just take a, a towel when I remove this and I just wrap it up in the towel. That way, if it touches anything, it's not gonna make any connections. There we go. Now we are ready to get to the inside. So the first thing that we need to do is to remove this outer trim. This is just held in by two push pins down at the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like. Basically, you just push the pin in. There's two of them. And then you can use a trim tool to remove the push pin. All right, and the way that this works is normally it's flat like this. And then you use the, put, the pick tool to push that pin in. And that's what allows you to take it out. So before we put it back in, we're gonna push this all the way in so that the pin is sticking out. And then once it's in, we'll push this flat to lock it in place. So I'll just go ahead and get the other one. There we go. And then the other thing that we need to do to get this trim off is there is a clip up at the top. So we're gonna use a trim tool and we're gonna put it underneath this speaker grill. Use a plastic one so that you don't damage anything. And if it's new, it's gonna be tight. Just work your tool around it. All 
All right. So this is what it looks like. There's basically just a bunch of tabs all the way around that hold it in place. All right, so now that we have those two pins out, we will go ahead and remove the trim. So this was super tight, and I'm assuming that it's because it's brand new. Um, but basically, you're going to want to lift from the bottom and then from both sides. And when you're doing it, lift up and out, and it'll come out. Um, there's no other screws or tabs or anything like that. But these tabs up at the top just really, really stick in there. And you're going to think that you're going to break it. Okay, so one difference between this, which is an LCI 2 and the LCIs, is that you actually need to pop off these trim panels first before you can get this off. Um, off camera, I was trying to get this off by pressing in the tab and pulling it out. And then I realized that the radio actually goes behind those trim pieces. So take your trim tool before you take this out. Like you can get rid of the, the T20s that are there. Um, but take your trim tool, make sure it's plastic so you don't break anything and go under these pieces right here. So go all the way around. There's a ton of clips. This is gonna come off. Um, this is also a good way to replace this with some other, you know, finish. Um, you know, so if you wanted to upgrade it to like carbon fiber or something like that, you could totally do that. But this radio piece, this head unit, fits in between the plastic here and that trim piece. Um, so we need to do the same thing over on this side as well. And so that's going to, uh, like I said, you just put your trim tool underneath and then make sure that when you're doing it, your trim tool is in between the plastic and the trim piece. All right, so this trim piece is out now as well. And now, now we can get the radio out. So we're gonna take, we'll put our, something to press that tab in and we'll just move this a little bit to the side. All right, so if anyone ever tells you that it's a piece of cake, uh, they're probably lying, or they've had their car for a really long time and it's loose. Um, so here is the tab that we were pressing down from up top. Um, and then these are two clips that also hold it in place. And so that's why you kind of got to wiggle it. So you get these clips out, but this tab is the one that um, is really, really holding it in place. All right. So now we can turn this over. Um, you're just gonna remove all the plugs that are in here um, so that we can set this aside. So basically you have this, um, let's see, let's start with the white one over here. This is just a pull out. There's no tabs or anything like that. Um, this one back here, there is a tab on the side. Let me show you that. So this fits in here like this. And there's squeeze tabs on the side. And that's how you pull it out. Um, so this one back here, right here, this one has a squeeze tab as well, right up at the top. Then you can pull that out. Uh, the LCD cable here that also has a squeeze tab on it. This one's going to be really tight. Sometimes you need a a trim tool to kind of put some outward pressure on it while you're taking it out. There we go. And then this other one's super tight, but just hold on to it, wiggle it back and forth and it will come out. And then 
you have your radio out now. All right, so now we need to remove these four T20s uh, holding the radio in. And this is another thing that's different on the LCI too. So this one, the radio is, looks like it's actually in a cage. And so this T20, the bottom set, uh, are what hold the backing for the trim in place. And then the top T20 uh, appears to hold um, the bracket that's holding the radio in. So let's go ahead and remove these four T20s. And you can actually move this out of the way because you'll need to take the radio piece. So I'll just move this out of the way as well. Okay, so now we should be able to swing this radio out and up. There we go. We don't really need to take um, this whole thing out. I mean, you can if you want, but basically the stuff that we need is we need to remove this quad lock here and we need to swap out the LCD cable. So to remove the quad lock, Actually, you probably do need to remove the radio because it looks like the optical cable on the quad lock is pretty tight um, because it's actually wrapping around uh, the other side of the radio for some reason. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's remove all the connections on the radio because we're not going to be able to flip it around to get that uh, that optical cable out. So for these here, these just have a tab here. And everything's color coded, so don't worry about like remembering where stuff goes. Um, these have tabs as well. You have your LCD cable. All right, and then you have this this cable here. This has a little tab. They'll just push to the side, and then this will pull out. So right here is a tab and you just push that to the side. All right, now for these cables over here, these have uh, tabs as well, but you have to unlock them first. So basically you pull out and then you push them down and pull out. So here's, here's what that looks like. This white tab pulls out and then you're able to push down on it. And that's the bat, these three cables on the right here. Okay, so for the quad lock, I do not know why they decided to wrap this around like this. We are gonna route this much better when we put this back in. All right, so for the quad lock, you have your release lever here. You're just gonna pull it up and as you pull it up, the lock's gonna come out. So now your radio is free. Now we can start putting in some of the Beamer Tech wiring. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to transfer this optical cable, it's green and black, over to the Beamer Tech harness. So what you'll wanna do is take a pick tool and there is a tab that you'll just press out and then pull the optical cable out. It'll just slide right out. And then you'll take your Bimtech harness and you will put it in the same slot that you took it out from. It's just going to slide right in. There we go. It only goes in one way. Um, now you can take the mini harness, plug that in, 
It will only go in one way. Don't force it. So you're going to put it in and then you're going to rotate the quad lock to lock it in place. The quad lock should kind of pull everything in together. There we go. Okay, so next let's run both the USB and the HDMI cables. You don't have to run the HDMI, but um, now's a good time if you are ever thinking about it because um, you don't want to have to go and pull all this stuff off uh, after the fact. So I just went ahead and uh, grabbed an HDMI female on one side, male on the other. And we're going to take this and there is a opening over here to the right and it goes over to the driver's side. So we are going to run it through there. It's a, it's a pretty decent size opening. All right, so that is going to come out right under the steering wheel. Um, obviously, we're not going to leave them there like that, um, but we can have them kind of tucked in. I'll probably use some Tesla tape to um, secure them together, uh, but we'll push them in under the steering, and then ever, if we ever need them, then we can use them and plug in. Um, there's a bunch of different places that you can route this. You can route it all the way down and, and kind of out of the trim. Uh, the glove box is a little tougher because it's air conditioned, um, but you could also run it like out underneath the glove box, kind of whatever, um, you know, wherever you feel like, but there is a pretty generous hole that comes out right underneath here. And honestly, the chances of you needing the USB other than doing an update is pretty low. Um, and then HDMI, um, you know, uh, it depends on how often you're going to use that. Okay. So. After I routed the cables underneath the steering wheel, which um, that's what most people do, I thought, why don't we run them into the, to the glove box like we did on the F-33? Um, so I took the piece off here, the, the rest of the trim piece. It's super easy. There's just a couple of clips uh, and a couple of plugs to unplug the, um, the lighting that's in there. But on top of the glove box, there are some holes uh, now, none of the holes are big enough to fit the cables. So I took a drill and I widened the hole that was there. There's one kind of larger hole towards the front on the left, and that's what I used. Um, I mean, that's up to you whether or not you want to drill in your car. You don't have to. You can run it underneath your glove box and then you're not, you know, modifying the car at all. But I thought it would be super clean to just have them come out of the glove box like this. Um, so that's, that's what I did. Um, so now we've got, we've got these run, we've got the optical cable and the Bimmer tech harness in. And I think really the next thing to do is we need to run the, uh, LCD cable and, uh, just kind of start putting everything back together and, uh, plugging everything back into place. That's really the easy part out of all of this. Uh, the hard stuff is working with those um, super tough clips because they're all just brand new. So take your Bimmer Tech cable and the LCD, and we're going to plug that in. So uh, use the right angle cable, and that is just going to go in the back of the LCD. Push it in until it clips. All right, and then we can put this aside for right now. Take your MMI Pro, and by the way, the installation is exactly the same if you were gonna use the Prime or the Pro, you just won't have the HDMI cable uh, for it. So take your uh, HDMI and USB and we'll plug them into the, into the Pro so the HDMI goes in the back. And the USB will go right here and all of this stuff, it only plugs in one way. So you don't really have to worry about plugging it in incorrectly. All right, and then off of the main wiring harness, 
you'll have this cable here and this just plugs in to that bigger plug. All right, only a couple more cables. Take your LCD cable that came uh, with the mini and we're gonna plug that into the uh, LCI in. All right, and then we'll take the other LCD cable, the one that's connected to the screen, we're gonna go LCI, LCD out. And then the only thing that we have left to plug in is for the antenna. Um, so I was thinking about where I wanted to mount the antenna and I think I want to mount it um, on the outside of the radio. So after we mount the radio, uh, I'm going to mount it to the face. That way there's less kind of interference. So we'll plug in the, LC, uh, the antenna cable into the last spot left. And then we'll take all of these cables and just kind of move things out of the way. And this box is gonna fit all the way down um, into a cavity that's down here. So you're just gonna put this all the way down. All right, so I was able to fit the MMI box all the way down um, super far, it's totally out of the way. Um, basically you have some, some ductwork in here and you'll see a, a split in the ductwork where two pieces connect together and there's a screw. It's actually below that screw there. So it's not gonna be in the way and it doesn't rattle at all. It's in there really, really tight. So next, let's get the radio put together. So you're gonna still wanna run the uh, optical cable um, on the other side of the radio, as much as I don't want to do that, um, the optical cable is just too short. I, I don't understand why they decided to do it that way. Um, maybe some cost savings, I don't know. But you're going to put the, the quad lock in and push it down until it stops. And then you'll take this bar, the locking bar, and as you put it down, it's going to sync the connections into place. So now we can take the rest of our connections. We'll start over here on the right hand side and uh, we'll put the black one in. These will snap and then you'll push the locking tab in so that they lock in place. We'll do the pink one here. All right. And then over on this side, we've got our LCD cable. And this one is the one that is going to the MMI box. All right, and then we've got a white cable here. And this little cable. And then over on the left, we have our last two and those just pop into place and you'll hear them clip. All right. So now we can take our radio and we're just gonna slide it kind of back and then in, all right? And you will see the clips, uh, these side pieces here kind of fit in place. They're gonna go behind the vent, all right? So kind of in between the, the wall of the car and then, and then the vent. There we go, just like that. And then all of these cables can just kind of get pushed, you know, out of the way. There's tons of room in here to do that with. Um, so let's get the radio screwed in here. And again, these are all T20s. I like to put them in kind of most of the way, but not secure them all the way yet. Um, that way I can make sure everything, you know, fits nice. And then once I have all four in, then, then I go ahead and tighten them down. All 
All right, and we're just make sure that this trim piece is pushed down into all the clips. And then before we totally secure this all in place, let's take this, uh, actually take this LCD cable that's gonna go to the front and let's route this just over to the side here. Just so it's kind of out of the way. All right, so now you can take your trim panel if you pulled it off and we're just gonna connect these two wires. All right. And I'm just gonna run this the same way that these other two are. All right, and you're gonna just wanna make sure your, your vent gets in there, line up all the clips. And it should just pop right in place. Don't force it because you don't want to bend your clips. But you'll feel it just kind of snugly pop in. There we go. Okay, so now we got to put on the antenna. So we'll just peel off the sticky. And I'm going to put this right, right on the stereo. Um, I'm going to make sure that I'm not covering up any holes or anything, but it's going to stick right there. That way we got a good, nice, clean signal, nothing blocking. And then we'll just push these cables down and out of the way. That way we got enough room for the screen. And then if you want to, you can zip tie all these up. I'm just going to use the twist ties here. All right, we'll put that down in there. And uh, one thing that I noticed when I was trying this all out is make sure you set the dip switches on the back of the MMI. Um, there is it came set up for like the uh, six inch screen um, and I had to flip it to match the eight inch screen. It's like 8.8. .8. And then there's also a 10 inch screen. So make sure the screen size that you have that you're setting the switches uh, appropriately. All right, we'll just ratchet that tight. This is going into plastic, so don't go crazy. Okay. The only thing left uh, to make is connection wise is the screen. Um, all of these only go in one spot and one way. You can't mess it up. Even these black and white cables here, um, they don't like you can only fit them in where they're supposed to go. So just plug all those in. Don't forget your LCD cable. All right. So now we need to Put this in here, line everything up, and it's just going to clip in place. Nice even pressure everywhere. There we go. 
And you've got two more T20s at the bottom. All right. So let's take the trim pieces that we removed and pop those in. Just line everything up and they'll clip in place. And there's a bunch of clips all over. So just take your time and make sure you're punching them all in. And this uh, one behind the screen is a little tight. You just kind of have to tilt it. All right, so we've got two more trim pieces. We will take, let's take this one here. Um, the way you can tell up, down, left, right is there's a big divot here at the bottom. And then you have your two punch pins, your push pins there. So just line it up. You'll feel it kind of come into place and then just give it a, give it a good push. It'll snap. Perfect. And then you'll take your push pins and put those in the bottom. Remember to take the pin out or not out like, but so that it's, you know, sitting out here. And we're gonna pop that in the hole. All right, and then we'll do the other one. Perfect. Okay, and the last piece. Let's put this on here. All right, so let's go ahead and configure the MMI. First, uh, just put your car in accessory mode. And then if you have an Android phone, leave it connected to the mini side. You're gonna need that for phone calls. If you have an Apple phone, go ahead and remove the connection from the mini to your Apple phone because you're gonna go through the MMI um, only. But Android, leave it, leave it connected. So to get over to the Android side, to the MMI side rather, press and hold the menu button in the iDrive controller until you get the screen here. Then scroll over to settings and click on connections, pair new device, and then click start search. And you're gonna find your phone pop up There we go, there's my phone. Um, and then once you click your phone, you'll get hands-free profile, click again. And then you'll see something pop up on your phone to accept the pair and just go ahead and do that. All right, so as soon as it's done pairing, you'll see the screen flip and you are in Android Auto. Um, now one thing to note with Android Auto is the touch screen itself is not going to work um, on this side of the car. Now if you flip back by again pressing and holding on the menu button, the touch screen will totally work. It just does not work on the Android Auto side or Apple CarPlay side. Um, but you can still use the wheel controls and you can use your iDrive controller to control everything on the screen. Um, now, before, before we say we're done, we need to go into the mini side and actually um, increase the volume for the aux, uh, the aux port. So go ahead and press and hold menu and you'll be uh, back in the mini side. And then go to, uh, let's see, I gotta remember where this is at.
All right, so go to media, aux, and then you will see a little plus minus up here. Go ahead and click that, and then you'll have the volume for that. So I found that um, increasing it to just over halfway seemed to be a really good spot. If you don't, if you don't do this, the volume on the Android Auto side is going to be really, really quiet. Um, I wouldn't go ahead and increase it all the way. It's just going to be too loud. Uh, you're also might, um, you know, put unwanted interference or, or something like that, you know, in the line. So keep it as low as you can. Like I said, mid or a little bit over mid is good. Um, that makes it so the volume when you're increasing the volume, um, it's it gets appropriately loud, right? Um, you don't want to be trying to, to blast it and it's super quiet. So right about there is good. Um, that is going to give you the sound that you need. Uh, go ahead and, and click and hold menu again um, and you're back. Now there's a couple other things uh, on, uh, on the MMI to show you. Uh, if you are playing, say, Spotify or Pandora or something like that, if you tap the iDrive controller quick, either uh, right or left, it'll either skip to the next song or uh, go to the previous song. Um, and then if you go to the little dots down here uh, for menu, um, this is where all of your apps are. So um, you can, you know, transition to ways, you can look at messages, um, you know, all the different stuff, uh, phones in here. Again, phone, you can control everything through this side, but if you have an Android phone, the sound is actually going to be connected through the car, but it, it's, it's pretty seamless. Uh, Bimertech did a really, really, really good job uh, with this. Now, one thing to note, when I initially did the installation and was trying all of this out, there was no sound on this side, uh, on the MMI side. And I realized that the Mini did not come with an aux port. Um, and that is how the MMI communicates with the radio. It goes through the aux port. So I reached out to Bimmer Tech and had a coding session with them. And they coded in the aux port and everything started wa uh, working perfectly. So if you are not getting sound on the MMI, check and see if you have an aux port. It's listed under all of your sources. If you don't, reach out to Bimmer Tech, uh, schedule a coding session, and they can get that uh, situated for you. Um, one, one other thing, you have uh, voice command, that's you know right on your steering wheel. So press and hold that and you'll get uh, either Siri or Google uh, voice commands uh, through here. Works perfectly. Um, yeah, I mean, it's this is this is honestly this completes the car. Uh, without this and having an Android phone, you're just kind of stuck. So um, I really, really like this. It's a really great solution. Um, and I love that it's plug and play. So you, you know, if you sell the car, you can take it all out, transition it to your next car or what have you. And, you know, you put the car back to, to the way it was stock. Um, there's no, you know, permanent modifications to the car, unless of course you do glove box modification. Um, so that's, that's it. Now, as you saw, installing the MMI Pro is really easy and should only take you about an hour or so to install. I love that it's plug and play and it really completes the F57 in regards to technology. The wireless connection is a killer feature for me and probably my favorite feature so far. Now, this was just an install video, but I'm gonna put out a full review once I've had a chance to play around with it a bit. Now, as always, I have put links in the description below to all the tools and products needed for this install. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button, smash it if that's what you're into, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you on the next one. God bless.